Let's just keep Go showing dude. that. I, I, I'm good with just showing that. Ladies and gentlemen, the future Hall of Famer, Vince Carter, whose highlight reel, I would say, rivals any highlight reel that has ever been put together in history. Good morning, Vince. How are you? Morning. Thank you, man. Thank hey, you for that. Thank you for doing this. And congratulations on everything. And, and we're going to dive into all this playoff stuff here because we're using you as an analyst and delighted to do it. But I, I just wanted to give credit where it is due it to you because people would ask all the time over these last couple of years, why is Vince Carter still out there? Why is he still playing, even especially on t at the end of your career, on teams that you know, realistically weren't going to win a championship? And it seemed to me you were doing it because you liked it, and there's probably no better reason to do it than that. Was that what, 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 what was your answer when people would say, why is Vince Carter still out there? Absolutely. I, I think, you know, I'm going to go for, further than that. I'm going to say I, I did it because I loved it. Uh, I, I still felt that I can compete, uh, but I wanted to play. Uh, that's how I wanted to contribute, uh, you know, to sit on the bench and, and just collect a ring uh, with a, a team. It wasn't my way of handling my business and, and enjoying uh, what I had left as a basketball player. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I was fortunate enough to be able to do it my way and still play the game that I love and I worked so hard for even uh, in, in, into my 40s. So uh, it, it was great. It was a great run. It was fun to watch. Okay, let's put you to work here. I want to start uh, by playing some sound from Anthony Davis, who I have identified, in my opinion, as the most important player in this upcoming NBA playoffs, which begin today. And he, of course, has always been on underdogs. Now he's on a favorite. Here's what he said about that difference. That was very different. Um, you know, I think in New Orleans, most of the time we, we were the underdogs. Um, you know, here, um, we, we're the favorite. So the target's a lot bigger, you know. And when you're an underdog, winning games that you're not supposed to, um, you necessarily don't have a target on your back. You know, but when you're the favorite, uh, I think you know, the pressure is more on you to win games than the other team. Let's talk about that, Vince Carter. How does that pressure affect players, and how would you expect it to affect Anthony Davis? Uh, that pressure that pressure does affect players, and, and I think you know, when you come into a situation like Anthony Davis, it's, when you're the underdog, you just go out there and play, and you swing for the fences, and you say, hey, we'll see what happens. Now when you're the favorite, and you're expected to play in the Eastern Conference Finals, if not the finals, the pressure is to go out and play perfect basketball. Uh, you know, they, he has the luxury of a LeBron James uh, on his side and, and can lead him when he's not playing well. But I agree with what, something you said off air. Is he is probably the most important player um, for their team right now. I mean, you know what LeBron's going to bring, but you need Anthony Davis to play at a high level for them to accomplish that goal and at least make it to the to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, and if not more, I, I think just the Western Conference Finals at this point would be a disappointment based upon their season and based upon the two stars they have. Let, let's pick up on that thought. What specifically do you think Anthony Davis needs to give them to get them through the West, to get them through the Clippers, and maybe to win the whole thing? I say monster numbers. And, and he's going to need no monster numbers because – until they figure out who their third guy, Kuzma is very capable of being the third guy. We know, like, once again, we know LeBron is going to be LeBron, and in moments when he needs to step up, he will do so. But playing through Anthony Davis will make things easier for the Lakers. It'll open up shooting. I know they didn't shoot, a, they have shot a great percentage in the bubble uh, and, and throughout the year. But I, I think monster numbers, I'm saying somewhere in the, the you know, 30. And, and at least 12, 12 rebounds a game. I mean, you're, you're putting pressure uh, not only outside. I'd like to see him work in the post more, uh, getting the Lakers into the penalty uh, to, to, to get free throws and, 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 and score with, without the clock uh, moving. So I, I feel like for him, he has to play great from start to finish. I love it. 30 and 12. I wrote it down. Those are the expectations for Anthony Davis. Let, let me play one other thing quickly here, and that is from Giannis, the, the prohibitive favorite on the mm -hmm. other side of the bracket in the East is Milwaukee, but they have not looked good in the bubble at all. Here are Giannis's thoughts on that. Obviously, it was frustrating because at the time, I think we wasn't ourselves. Wasn't uh, moving the ball as much as I want, wanted to move the ball or as much as Coach Bud wants us to move the ball. Um, he wasn't defending us hard. Um, as I said, there was times that we were ourselves. We were the number one team uh, in the league on defense, but uh, there was time that we showed that. There was time that we didn't. 
All right, so I can't make up my own mind what to read into these seeding games because the circumstances are so in, in, impossibly unusual. So I would ask you this question. Who do you think is the biggest threat to Milwaukee in the East? Which team are you, are you give the best chance to knock out a team that is a heavy favorite? The Toronto Raptors, uh, point blank period. Uh, the concerns I have uh, for, for the Bucks are, are, are as this. You think of how they, they lost last year and the disappointment of, of, of losing and feeling like they should have made it to the NBA Finals. And, and then you think of how things ended in, in the bubble in their last two games with Giannis being ejected with the headbutt. Now we're constantly talking about that and we're talking about the distraction. Then you come in and you're hearing these, these sound bites about defensive uh, effort, the ball moving. These are things that you do not want to go into the playoffs as a concern and a distraction. The distractions, you can say what you want. Distractions are important and something you want to go away immediately. But if they can't get rid of these distractions, just play carefree basketball and be the number one team that they've earned, this is going to be a situation down the line that could bite them. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.